What's up guys, Chris Basilbilt here. Wanted to post a follow-up video on my golf cart dilemma. As you can see, I still have one of the golf carts in my garage. The other one, it's nowhere to be seen. So I took the EasyGo golf cart to the lake and I've been using it and it's been working, but I just simply don't like it. It's a two stroke, it's smoky, it's stinky, it's noisy. It runs fine, it goes down the road fine, it'll climb the big hill at the marina. It does everything it needs to do, but I just simply don't like it. So I got an offer. I do a little bit of work at the marina on jet skis and, and stuff, and the guy that owns the place is a big time horse trader. He likes trading stuff around, and he likes helping me out because he knows I like tinkering with stuff too. So he said, hey Chris, you know, you like working on golf carts. He goes, you know, I've got quite a few of those uh, club car, carry all, you know, it's like this, but with a truck bed on the back, uh, electric carts that, you know, they all need something, but I've got four or five of them and you could surely make one work with a new set of batteries. And I started thinking to myself, you know, what would be cool to lithium swap one of those, put like a 48 volt single lithium battery in it and a new charger. And then it eliminates all of the electric golf cart problems, like having to keep it on the charger all the time. And, uh, I'm um, having to service the battery all the time. And I was like, you know, that sounds like a great idea. So I think my objective now is I'm going to go ahead and sell the blown up club car. Um, I went ahead and set the motor back in the back of it because I was sick of it taking up my workbench and I'm, uh, I'm migrating to some other projects. I've got my uh, Yamaha 650 stand up motor on the bench ready to get built. So, so I'm gonna sell this one and I'm gonna sell the easy go and I'm going to apply that money towards buying whatever controllers and batteries and stuff I need to convert one of the truck golf carts. Because really at the end of the day, that's what I want. I want one with a truck bed. I want one that's got storage that I can haul my tools around in and stuff. Like that's way more my speed than one of these little, you know, taking my golf cart to the lanes. Cause I don't golf anyways. So, and I think the electric one will be better for, for Morgan. I think she'll like that better. No starting it up or messing with the choke or all that crap. I think it's just going to work better. So golf cart dilemma solved for now. And uh, I'll probably post another video of the lithium swap. And once ever I sell these and get the other one here and yada, yada, we'll, we'll continue on that. The main reason I'm making this video is because I want to bring up another dilemma. So... I had this motorcycle that uh, I think I posted in my last video. It was a dirt bike of my friend's, and he like paid for it a long time ago. Wouldn't come get it. Well, I finally talked his roommate into coming and getting it yesterday, so it's gone, luckily. I don't have to worry about it anymore. But he is a, well, I won't say closet, but he is an old Toyota fan. And uh, he saw my old 4Runner, and he just lost it. Like, man, you got this thing sitting back here, and you're not doing anything with it? And I was like, I know. I know. It's an embarrassment. And this looks like it's been sitting here forever. It's only been sitting here for like less than a year. It just, everything that's sitting in the grass looks like it's been sitting forever. And I have had this running, I've driven it. I put a timing belt in it, a fuel pump in it. I mean, I've driven it up and down the road. It doesn't look great inside because I've just been stacking crap in it. And I do have that door panel, but for a first gen 4Runner, this thing's really in pretty solid shape, honestly. And I told him I wanted to sell it, but then I started thinking about it and I said, you know what? I'll never find again. There's another first gen 4Runner. So maybe should I just put the, the effort and the time into fixing this thing and making it good and roadworthy and just keep this forever? I mean, it's probably the move because you're not going to find another one, especially not another SR5 V6 five speed with all the options and all the stuff, you know, just like you'd want it. But here's the comparison. So I've got this and I've got a 2008 Jeep Wrangler. Okay. Now I know a lot of you are probably going to say, well, okay, well, they're both pretty cool. What's the comparison? They're not, we're not talking the same thing here. I agree. We're not talking about the same deal at all. Really. We're talking about like a modern car with a new engine because I've put a new engine in the Jeep and we're talking about a 1989 Toyota with an old engine that's probably seconds from dying. Okay, solid. Let's go look at the Jeep. 
here's the here's the reason why I'm making this comparison and why this is the decision because the 2008 Jeep is done it runs it's in it's not in great shape but it's in okay shape it's got some damage to the top it's got a little bit of rust because it came from like Michigan I think um, but it's not bad it's got some dings it's got some ex-girlfriend scratches, but it's clean on the inside. It's locked, but it's clean on the inside. It's got a rebuilt 3.8. It's a first gen JK, so it's not a 3.6, it's a 3.8. Automatic. This thing's probably worth 10 grand. So if I sold, the, and this paid for, I paid for it outright. I paid for the engine outright. So it's just money sitting here. So if I sold this for 10 grand, and I put, say, half of it into that red 4Runner, it'd be kick-ass. So what do you guys think? Keep the Jeep because it's simple and it's already done. Sell the 4Runner. I mean, the other problem is, and I've had this problem for years, this is uh, probably one of my largest downfalls, is that I'm not good at selling broken stuff. I like buying broken stuff. So a lot of times I'll let stuff sit around for a year or two or more because I won't give it away because I bought it broken myself. You know, like this <coughs> jet ski wave runner it was free. I got it literally for free. I drug it off the ground onto a trailer, brought it home, cleaned it up, put a battery in it, got a title for it. And it's got a minor water leak I need to fix, and then it's ready to go. But I'm not going to sell it this way. I'm not going to sell it till it's done, because I don't want to sell it for $500. I want to sell it for like $2,000. Same thing with this. I bought this 4Runner. I'm just going to throw it out there. I paid $1,500 for this thing. Broken. Dead. Um, I've got... I might... If I edit this video properly, I'll post some pictures of what it looked like when I got it. It literally had like half inch of mold on it. I power washed it, cleaned it. There's like an inch of dust on everything on the inside. I did a bunch of stuff to clean this thing up and I know it doesn't look like much still and it's obviously still got the typical older Toyota quarter panel rust issues, but there's no rust on the frame. This thing's been an Oklahoma truck its whole life. It was bought new in Oklahoma. So it's just got the rust from age. I mean, it's 33 years old. So, I mean, that's not a big deal. And they sell patch panels for this because it's a common failure. Really what this needs at this moment, it needs valve cover gaskets, it needs the fuel injectors cleaned or replaced, and it needs the fuel system cleaned. And then I think it'll run. I mean, I've had it running, I have driven it, but I've never really had it consistently running on six cylinders the way it should be. So I think what I'm gonna do at the very least is clean the injectors, do the knock sensor relocation, clean the gas tank, and get it running and driving and see how bad it is, how good it is, what's left of it, and then make the decision. But I just don't need all these cars. I need something to go, I need more space, and I need this not to be sitting here in the grass like this because technically it is not uh, legal for my municipality for a vehicle to be sitting on the grass like this. So luckily it's in the backyard, no one can see it, no one knows it's back here, but uh, you know, if someone wanted to, there is some, houses in the area going up for sale and if something changes hands and someone doesn't like my uh, style of storage I could very well be in uh, big trouble with all of this stuff I have in the backyard on the grass because you're not allowed to do that technically all of my trailers are illegally parked now if someone wanted to bitch I could put it all in the driveway and um, have like no store no way to get anything around no way to get anything in the garage I could do it done it but I don't want to do that I want to clear some space but uh, here's the question, old versus new, cool versus normal. You know, do you want to have the same car that every fifth car you pass? Or do you want to have the only car like yours that someone's going to see that day? You know, I think I know my answer. Um, if it were two or three years ago, I would say, screw that Jeep 4Runner all the way. But nowadays, I do kind of go for like comfort and um, 
your sensibility and things like that. And I know like a Jeep Wrangler is not sensible. It gets bad gas mileage, it has no power, but that thing is solid. You know, I literally just put a fresh engine in it. So I can literally just hop in it and drive it anywhere right now. It's got cold AC, it's got cruise control, it's got everything. It's got a trailer hitch. I can take this to the lake with it today, right now. Maybe I'll even do that later. Maybe I'll take this to the lake later. I don't know. So anyways, uh, comment down below. What do you guys think? Old 4Runner, newer Jeep. What would you, what would you rather have? And um, also too, uh, check my subscribers. I'm up to 300. So cool. Thanks guys. Appreciate you watching the videos. Feel free and comment your thoughts down below. What do you think I should do? What do you want to see more of? Do you guys like the jet ski content? Do you like car content? Do you like golf cart content? What do you, what, what do you guys think? So leave me some input down below. I'll put my email in the description. If you guys want to send me any other thoughts outside of YouTube, ask any questions, feel free. ChrisBasilBuilds at gmail.com. Appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned for more. See ya.